American masks. Woohoo! Today we are going to be making a clay African mask using white clay. We are going to be using construction paper crayons and then when you are all done with your coloring we're gonna dip it in India ink and you get this beautiful resist. So I'm drawing my basic shape to where I'm going to trace this onto my slab of clay. Now a quick trick for symmetry. You can draw half of your mask, fold that paper in half. Okay, do you see where we're going? We are going to cut this in half. Now that we have this center line, we know where the center of your mask is going to be. We are going to draw the eye line, the nose, and the so mouth. So here would be my eye area. You can do some ovals, depending on what mask you chose. These have different kinds. Now, an African masks are also really, really cool because they sort of represent animals. So if I wanted to make sort of like a, a cat, then I could do the ovals going in. I think I'm gonna go for that. Once you are done drawing your mask template, you made the size of the mask according to how big your slab is going to be. Like I said, if you have a smaller, or this fits perfectly, uh, make sure that it fits. If it's too big, measure it with your slab. A slab is a piece of clay that has been flattened. I made ours a little bit thick um, so that when you press on it and then you drape it on your structure that it doesn't fall apart. The clay can be very delicate so you have to be gentle. Okay so I'm going to use a plastic clay tool. There's different kinds that you can use. You can also use just a disposable knife from a um, a little disposable set. So here I sliced. If you notice, some people, when they cut into clay, they do this up and down, up and down. You're not making, okay? It's going to be all jagged and uneven. Do you see that? So when you slice into clay, you want to come from an edge if possible hold your paper down, put your clay tool into the clay, like butter, and then you're slicing right on that edge. That gives you a nice, smooth edge. And I'm gonna pull this all the way to the side, right here, I just pulled out. And now I can remove this piece, and I'm not throwing any of my clay away because I'm gonna use it for additional details. With a pencil, you can trace lightly over your lines into the clay. It's okay if your paper kind of starts to fall apart because the moisture from the clay will kind of make it. Do you see the line right there? It's a very light indention. And you can also press it gently with your pencil to make it show a little better. All right, so there we have one cheek. And then you just keep going. We are ready for press molds. In this case, the patterns that you are going to embed, that means press in, into the surface of your mask. Because flat clay is interesting, but not as interesting as when you have all that detail. So here, I have two press molds, they're rubber, uh, and then I also have used in the past some stamps and make sure that you are uh, okay with them getting a little clay on them. These are old stamps that I don't use anymore. Here I have this pattern and I think I'm gonna start here in the middle, that's fun. And if you notice, I am pressing with medium strength, okay? Just make sure that you don't press so much that your 
clay becomes really flat. That would not be good. So I'm just using two fingers and I'm pressing. If the top of your rubber stamp or rubber molds right here is flat against the clay, you are good. If you go deeper than that, you're going too low. And lift, voila. Okay, and keep going depending on where you want these patterns. That's if it's too light, I would suggest doing it again to make sure that you really get that impression on there. In this mask, we had students cut out some area and then fold it over. You can do that if you want to make an opening on the eyes. Just be very careful. If not, leave it solid. Solid is good too. You can build up the surface of the eyes. I think I'm going to try lifting this one i'm going to show you just one so notice how i put the clay tool into the clay and then gently slice only on this line okay then i'm going to push gently from the bottom and you are going to lift to show that eyelid Mm, I love it because cheetahs, they have like natural eyeliner. They're very fancy. Okay, gentle, always gentle. Never pinch the clay because it could fall apart. Oh, I love that. And then you don't even have to worry about score and slip for this part because the clay is already connected. You basically just fold it. All right, I'm going to do it to this side. And then put my fingers through the bottom and lift. You may also choose to make some indentions just for more decoration. African masks are never boring. Okay, so more or less on a separate piece of clay, trace, for example, here I just need my nose. Okay, you can even cut out that part of your drawing in this case I just need this triangle shape made of clay so I'm gonna cut it out and then I'm gonna trace this on my clay okay and slice around it notice how I use the word slice okay so this is gonna make it more three-dimensional there we go. And now clay, we cannot just put clay there because um, it's going to fall apart. The way we attach clay, we have this tool. This is a little scoring tool. Kind of looks like a little rake, a tiny little rake. If you don't have this, you can use a fork or you can use a pencil. All you need to do is scratch some lines on the back of the piece that you are attaching and then scratch some lines. This is called scoring score where it's going to touch okay be gentle so that you don't get marks outside of your shape and then with the, your clay tool grab a little bit of slip slip is liquidy clay and this is going to act as your glue this is connecting clay to clay score and slip Right now, we are going to attach this. And when you press down, you're gonna hear like whoosh, whoosh. That's the clay, the liquid clay connecting both pieces with all those little lines that you scratch, those scoring part. If you want, you can gently press down for nostrils with your clay tool. Oh, I love this. You can press all kinds of things into clay to give you a special effect. You see that? I just use my round tool. You could also do it with a pencil if you don't have clay tools. Okay, now I'm ready for the ears. The ears are gonna be fabulous. Okay, I have my extra clay right here. And then again, I think I'm going to cut out one ear and then cut two ears, trace them onto the clay. 
just the same way that we did the nose. I am done connecting now all the extra pieces. I added the two pieces to the ears. Again, they're connected like the nose. And I'm going to use my little scratch tool to create some furry texture in the ear. Just for more accent so that it has more textures when we add color. Perfect. All right. For the raffia, I'm going to put a few holes. Don't poke it too close to the edge because then you create very fragile clay. You want to come in a little bit and I like to twist my straw and then squeeze the excess out. This all has a purpose, I promise. We are going to leave this to dry overnight. After about a week, I would say, uh, when it gets really, really light gray, then it can go in the kiln. I'm going to start adding color to my clay. I know, coloring on clay, who would have thought, right? And try your best to stay inside of the lines, but it's gonna be a little hard to stay right on the lines because clay is bumpy and that's okay. Um, the black ink will take care of that. We are now ready for the India ink part. This is the India ink that we use. But also, if you don't have India ink, you can use watered down black temper paint. So I have here my India ink in a container and I am dipping it. I'll do half a, I am wearing a glove because India ink will stay on your fingernails for quite a bit. So dunking it and let it dry. Some people, do you see the crayon starting to come alive. See, I love the neon effect. If you dunk it more, um, it will become darker. And if you have too much excess, then with a paper towel, you can gently pat it dry. Here's the cheetah that you saw me make earlier in the video. We are ready. I did the crayons and now we are submerging our cheetah mask. We feel it's too dark for whatever reason. We can get a moist paper towel and rub it. Also, people, sometimes if it's too dark, they run it a bit under the water to get all that excess India ink off. You see how it's coming off? Beautiful. Whatever you left white will end up turning black. In this case, I want it a lot of black, especially around the eyes because cheetahs, like we said, they have beautiful eyeliner. Okay? You are going to let your mask dry, I would say overnight, and then you can add the raffia where you poke the holes. Okay. Yeah. Raffia comes in really long strings, so you want to make sure and measure more or less how much you need. Cut it to size, and don't worry if it's not super even, because at the end you can give it a haircut. Twist the little end so it goes in, um, sort of like, thread through a needle. If you feel like it's not enough, you can always squeeze in a little more into the same hole. Tie it. I recommend doing at least two knots. Most of the time I think I do three just to make sure that they really stay in there well. And I'm all finished adding the raffia to my newest African mask. If you feel that the hair is too long or uneven, just kind of guesstimate. I can grab about this much. You see how some are too long and clip, clip. Thanks for creating with us today. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Until next time, goodbye.